Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode of our podcast and YouTube channel, Ladies Who Lead. So if you've been following us, you know that we're all things about women's empowerment. We're helping women to build unshakable confidence, high self-esteem, self-belief, assertiveness, even in the face of adversity. Um, and today we have two very special guests with us called Amanda and Gemma. And the, the title is called Grow Your Network to Grow Your Net Worth. So basically, as the title suggests, it's all about networking, building connections, building relationships, um, and um, with the obviously with the aim of growing your net worth um, and also meeting some amazing people. So we're going to go uh, through our sequence of questions. But firstly, I'm just going to introduce uh, both Amanda and Gemma, who are actually mother and daughter which is very exciting. They are in business together. They run a business networking um, a franchise, UK franchise business. Um, and uh, yeah, they've been running for many years. So I'm going to let you uh, expand on that, please, and tell us a little bit more about what it is that you do and how it all started. Hi, hi, thank you so much for having us here, Nari. It's lovely to be here. Um, so I'm Amanda and I was actually the founder of Finder Biz Networking. Um, I started just over 10 years ago, about ready to have a celebration, I think. And um, Gemma joined me five years ago. And I have to say, Gemma is the person who has taken us to the franchise and I'm so proud of her. Um, I'm, I don't dot as many I's and cross as many T's and processes as Gemma does. I'm more of a people person. So together we do make quite a good team. What would you say, Gem? Yes. Hi, Nari. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Amanda is the people person of our business. She's the, really the face of Finder Biz and I'm much more the, the process. But together we make a really good team. Absolutely. And I've met you on many occasions and it was actually at a networking event that I met you. And every time I see you guys, I, I refer to them as the super duo because they make an amazing pair and so much impact. And uh, you've done so well. Uh, it's really inspiring this, your story um, and, and how you're developing and helping people all over the UK to expand their businesses and build, build networks. So to build on uh, the topic uh, of today's discussion, which is all about um, networking, really we thought we'd bring this to the table um, on ladies who lead because there's so many women out there who have an idea but they don't know where to start or they may in fact start and stop halfway often they don't believe in themselves um, they feel nervous or afraid to get out there to be seen to be heard they worry about what if I say something wrong and they hold themselves back um, so and, and networking is a really amazing way to fill in those gaps so today on today's conversation we're going to show you and, and literally talk to you about how you can do that in order to grow your business continue, keep your business growing and be successful in your business as well so the first question uh, we're going to look at is really what is your approach to business networking now business networking as we know is a process of establishing mutually beneficial relationships with other business people and potential clients and customers um, this can be um, suppliers uh, it can be for other people's contacts it can be for customers uh, building a customer base it can be for so many different things so tell us um what is your approach um to how you manage that shall i ask part so um we do have lots of ways of helping businesses and lots of the tip all of tick all of those boxes that you just said at uh, nari but really the main thing about business networking is about the business relationships that you build it's about talking to your fellow network with the fellow people in your networking group or at a meeting it's about getting to know them it's about out who they know who you know and of course you have to get to know people and you have to build up some trust before you will open up but the networking the magic comes from building business relationships so I just think it's all about the relationships mm -hmm. yeah and I think I think networking can be really intimidating especially when we look at it as part of our marketing and we go to an event and we think right we've got to meet customers we've got to make some sales from it we've got to you know have that re return on investment be really productive but I think if you go in 
really hard on yourself with that sales approach, it actually doesn't work. It's the opposite. You know, you go into networking. I think like Mary said, you know, go in high energy, chat to as many people as you can, make friends. And I think the biggest thing is to look for things in common with people. You know, there will be people you get on with, build on that commonality, see them a few times. And that's the best way rather than going in saying, right, I'm going to get an order for this and an order for this, because that really isn't how networking is done. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that because that's almost, it comes across as inauthentic even hearing you say that. So the more natural you sound, the more you build uh, connections based on credibility and real conversations, the more people you build that trust. Um, and, and I think often people don't buy from people that they don't trust. So to build that trusting connection, uh, people then, then, they, then they remember you, or they may even refer you. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I like that. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is, about specific tips that you may have for people who haven't been before or are just getting started with networking because there's so many people out there who actually don't want to go networking because they're too afraid of going networking um and they're, they're too afraid of being like put on the spot or asked a question you know um in a group of people that they're not familiar with so how what are your tips in that sort of situation well i i think there's lots of things <laughs> I, over the years, I've met so many startups that like to go network. Oh, you seem to be breaking up, Amanda. I don't. Then please go. Just no. Hang on. You just change your you internet. Want to sort I'll, I'll, I'll 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 yeah. yeah, that's fine. Don't worry. Yeah. So I think my my first tip really for people starting networking is to research where you're going because there is actually a whole range of different events with different sized businesses you're going to meet different people so I think actually having a good research what's in your area and thinking about who you want to meet and what you want to get out of it before you go puts you in the right room you know I mean we run very local business networking so when we have people come you know sell hundred thousand pound products you know to larger companies it isn't the right environment for them so i think it's about finding the right network for you which puts you in the right position and i think in terms of being put on the spot i think that is everybody's biggest fear that you're not going to know what to say but i think my my sort of answer to that is you get asked the same things a lot you know you get asked about your business so you can actually think ahead of time well when somebody asks me what i do what am I going to say? Yeah. And, um, you know, or how are you doing? How are your business is going? Questions like that. Mm -hmm. um, you get asked so many times. So I actually think having a little think before you go can just build that confidence in you of yeah. I've got something in my head to say. And then the conversation will ease in and you'll start just, you know, having a good chat. But I think normally the first question people ask you is, oh, what is it you do? Or, you know, how do you work? Or how do you have, how's your business going? That's the type of thing you can prepare a little answer to just to, to be ready. Yeah, I totally agree. Do you want to uh, add to that, Amanda? Sorry. Feeling yes. Am I, am I still here? Oh, Sorry, am I back? Am I back? So I, I, I think Gemma took over. Thank you, Gemma, from what I was saying. But I was just going to give a little example of a lady that came to one of our groups and she hadn't even got a business name, bless her. And she walked in and she said, I don't really know if I should be here. And with the support and with the advice of the members in the group who were much further on in their journey, I, I know she won't mind. She just, I'm not going to name her, but she just turned over her first six figure salary and that was uh, income and that was in about three years yeah. from not even having a business name but the support that she got from the group took her all the way to there you know I mean yeah. it's just it was just yeah. amazing and I think to add to that if the networking isn't welcoming to you then it's not the right network you know it Absolutely. goes back to that research thing you know she was very at the start of her business journey and we were a good supportive network for her but I think, yeah, finding that right one so that if it's not welcoming, it's it's not the right one. 
Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree because there's so many networking um, organizers out there and the way that they introduce themselves, the way that they manage the network uh, really says a lot about how people feel. So, I mean, being around you guys, I can honestly say from my own opinion that you're very welcoming, very informative, making sure people have everything that they need prior to the event, even being at the event and even after care. So that makes all the difference because that's the things that people remember. Um, and personally, when I go like when I feel like I want to be as engaging and as informative as possible so you like you said maybe have a few questions prepared beforehand uh, maybe prepare what you're gonna say about your business um, because these questions are going to be common questions and um, you know be, be be just be engaging and be yourself be natural and that's what I really do um, and crack a joke here or there because people <laughs> love humor so so that's good so this question really actually uh, ties in really well with a, um, a course that I've just uh, well I'm going to be launching this week and it's specifically for introverted people because it's often introverted people that you find that refrain uh, and shy away from networking because that's one of their pet hates to be around lots of people at the same time uh, in high energy environments where you have to say a lot and you have to hear a lot uh, but really it's it, it's you know it's really a place like we've just discussed where actually if you do have a business and a lot of introverts do have businesses um it's a great place to build those connections to find customers to find contact and leverage up each other's uh, networks as well so um so for uh, like building professional relationships but if people are uncomfortable with starting a discussion especially for introverts where they do often get talked over by extroverts <laughs> introverts are often deemed shy or even sometimes like they lack knowledge or they even could be considered ignorant or rude but that's only because of the way that people are perceiving them, not necessarily what actually is really the case. And that defeats the purpose of networking within itself, which is to build relationships and build connections, like you said. So for that reason, like um, uh, introverts often get overlooked. They often get forgotten about, which is even more of a reason why they might not want to return. Because if they didn't find it an enjoyable experience, then you don't want to do it again. Like they may not want to do it again. So I'm just mentioning my course there because it really, uh, there's a massive section in there about helping introverts on how to um, network effectively, um, how to build rapport, get noticed for their efforts and import, build meaningful connections and also have an impact. So people remember them um, yeah. enough to contact them again and even, even refer them. And at the same time as managing their inner critic, um, and um, managing their need for solitude, which is what they are absolutely need. So there's quite a lot in there which really relates to this whole networking thing because, yeah, introverts are the people and one third of us are introverts, right? Um, I mean, I'm actually an extrovert, but one third of the population is actually introverted. Um, so, and they could benefit massively. So they might be missing a trick by avoiding these networking events. Yes, so. please don't avoid if you're an introvert. Um, I've got, over the years, I've had some oh, I've wonderful relationships with people who say to me, I'm too shy, I'm too, I am an introvert, I don't want to stand up. Yeah. And I usually do the six seconds for them to start with and it's not a problem and we've got a little signal and if on the day they don't want to stand up and speak they just do that and I just seamlessly move past them you know we have all these things to make them feel comfortable but do you know what gives me the biggest thrill when we can't stop them talking when oh, they stand wow. up and we're having to do the whistle to say you're over your 60 seconds you know because they've built up and they've got their confidence in that room of people who are there to support them and my goodness watch them go and it oh it gives me I could cry really it's just amazing it's just amazing to see yeah. and uh, that's happened many many times that's such a beautiful thing, isn't it? Like you said, when you get somebody out of their comfort zone and they start mm -hmm. to experience for the first time that they actually really are enjoying it and then they don't want to stop. Um, yeah, that's really it's lovely. just amazing, amazing. Because yeah, yeah. you have to remember, uh, Nari, that when you're networking, you can practice your, you know, because as a business owner, you are going to have to speak to people about what you sell, aren't you? Mm -hmm. At some point, you've got to tell someone about it. Yeah. And when you're networking, you're in a safe environment with people people who are genuinely want to help and hear you know and it's a good place to practice yeah that's that, that's so true yes yeah. is there anything else uh Gemma you want to add to that well I think my 
big ask really is that the extroverts among us really help the introverts at Absolutely. networking and I think the best way to do it is when you're at a networking, if somebody's on their own, go up and introduce yourself because they might not know how to get into a conversation. Go and introduce yourself because you don't know who they are, what they do. It could be a brilliant contact for you and you've helped somebody to move their business on. So it's a great feeling. And the second thing is if you realise that somebody's shy and they have kind of clung to you a little bit and they're not sure what they're doing in the environment don't just leave them on their own if you want to go and speak to somebody else take them with you introduce them around the room help them to network the room you know and get to know people because they'll appreciate it and so will everybody else in the room that's my big ask extrovert help introverts i love that Gemma. i think that's so lovely what you've just said and what you've touched on there because that that's actually one the reason why i created this course because i'm an introvert being in the corporate world you know for so many years working in large organizations watching introverts be held back having close connections that are introverted that are super intelligent so they have so much to offer but they get overlooked because of those specific personality traits that they have um and that's a like a pet hate for me that, that people who are uh, who are worthy and deserving don't get noticed for their efforts and their achievements and that's one of the reasons i created this course and that that totally applies like you said it's up to us extroverts to pull them along get them involved get them engaged um and get them like just promoted to the level that they deserve to be and we, we have the i suppose um, the advantage of being able to do that because it because it comes naturally um so it's a two-way thing isn't it about helping each other because introverts are just as capable just as intelligent uh, if not more than 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 the extroverts who just know how to talk talk better so you know so definitely uh, and there's no harm in having a networking buddy as well you know somebody oh, yeah. you go with you know just to build up your confidence you know and it could be somebody in your team if they're more confident or they like that environment more there's no harm in, in yeah on these networking events together until you're comfortable yeah and that's one of the recommendations they uh they, they have out there is is for a, a introvert people to have an extrovert ally because it really helps um yeah helps them to really get get out of their comfort zone and just amalgamate in in um, in whatever environment it is because the world that we live in today it is all about building connections isn't it um shying away and hiding away isn't isn't really the way to 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 have anything of impact anymore like it was back in the day you know hiding behind a desk and just being um, on the keyboard so yeah that's really meaningful. Thank you very much for your input. So the and next I say go on. Well, sorry. Sorry Amanda was a real, you know, she's my mum. But when I first started networking, she was a buddy to me. I'd never yeah. done it before. And even as an extra, I was really nervous. She yeah. showed me the ropes, you know, and yeah. helped me to feel comfortable. And I still like it best when we go networking together. <laughs> Oh Me yeah, too. you're amazing <laughs> together. Yeah, people see you together, and you've always got so much value to add as individuals as well. Like you're a great duo, but as individuals, you're both them. Um, yeah, you've got so much to offer. So thank you. Um, the next question is also so building on that. How do you start a conversation then? So something you said earlier, like I personally do and I recommend is, is for people to have that elevator pitch, which is about a preset uh, sequence of words or maybe not in exact form, but what you're going to say about your business, have that prepared beforehand. So someone's going to ask you, what do you do? And that needs to be pretty sharp. It needs to be on the point and you need to appear knowledgeable about what you do, because if you don't know what you do, then nobody else is going to know what you do. <laughs> so uh, that that's one thing I do. And uh, the other thing i'll just mention is um i have an icebreaker sometimes so just to break the ice you know say something that you have in common you know say something funny say something about a, particular, a hobby or something that's what i personally do and it usually works really well because often people don't want to get straight into business they might want to talk about something unrelated which makes you likable before you start getting on to business again that authenticity that we start talked about so how would you recommend to people to start a conversation well it is that having those icebreaker questions in your pocket, isn't it? Mm. Um, because the one thing is you're at an event. So if you think, the thing is, people like to talk about themselves. Mm. So at networking, you do need to be quite a good listener. Yeah. Okay, so you think about that. So if you can get them talking, then you've made, you've started that, you started that conversation, haven't you? So one of the, a few questions that you can have in your pocket are things like, 
you know, how did you hear about this event? Because you've all you've gone to an event, haven't you? You both of you. So you've got that in common. So how did you how did you hear about it? How did you get here? You know, oh, did, how was the parking? Did you manage to park away at a bit of a job? You know, that sort of sort of it's things in common that are about the event. Um, and then, of course, we've always got things like holidays at this time of year and the good old we are British. So the good old weather always something you can talk about <laughs> and those things if you've got them in your pocket you can keep a conversation going and just watch it go yeah that's the easiest gap filler isn't it in the UK you've got that the weather that always saves the day so yeah saves the day <laughs> <laughs> perfect and I think and I think for me when I can see the one person on their own or maybe two people chatting and I want to go and join them then the thing I like to say really is just oh hi I haven't had a chance to speak to you yet because we are at networking and it really is that simple you know you are there to try and speak to people so you can literally go up and say oh hi we haven't had a chance to speak yet and then go into one of your icebreakers wait for them to say oh hello you know but I think that's actually quite a good way to, to either you know join a group or somebody on their own yeah absolutely um and again that that's those things really help other people to feel involved as well sometimes taking that first making that first move um and the other thing i noticed as well um is that when people start talking they often find that they stay in the same groups for quite a prolonged period of time so it can be like a two-hour networking event and then you can find that you've been speaking to like one person for 45 minutes and you're like oh no um i've got to actually work my way around the room yet so how how do you how do you suggest to manage that to get the best out of it okay <laughs> so you never ever ever <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to say the word you never sort of leave someone on their own I'll, I'll put Absolutely. it like that I'll put it like that so as Gemma said earlier if there's two of you talking or if if there's more than more than one other person then you can leave the two people that are two or more people that are talking and you can just say oh I'm just going to pop over here and that will be fine because everyone's expecting everyone to network and move around but if you were just talking to one person and yeah really you've got a bit stuck you know you can't really get away then as Gemma said the best thing to do is to take them with you get them talking in another group of people and then if you want to you can move on but don't leave them on their own take them with you get them engaged help yeah. and then you can move on yeah does that make sense yeah total and sense and i think a really good way to do this <clears throat> is to get them on board with it say right <clears throat> well we are supposed to be networking so shall we go and see together who else we can meet you know shall yeah. we go and speak to those two people together yeah because then you've included them you're helping them to meet new people and then once you've got them in a conversation if there is somebody else you want to go and speak to you can leave them there and yeah uh, go and speak yeah to yeah so it's about being courteous uh, uh, yeah. as well as obviously there's a purpose of uh, fulfilling the purpose of networking. Um, so, yeah, that, that's that's really useful information, which really brings us on to the next question, which is about how do you get the most value out of networking? Because you are there for a purpose. And at the end of the day, when you walk away, you want to have fulfilled your own goals for that networking event. So how would you suggest to do that? Right. Well, there's a few things. Um, if you're part of a networking group like the ones that we run, you need to be engaged. You need to put some time and effort into being a part of the group. Mm -hmm. If it's a one off networking, like some of the ones that Nari and I and we've met at recently, you need to make sure that you follow up with the contacts that you've made. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just go there. <laughs> you need to connect on LinkedIn. You need to perhaps arrange a one to one. You need to build that relationship further. And as I was saying, if it's part of a group like ours, again, one to ones and cheerleading and all this sort of thing for your fellow uh, members. But, you know, you know, that saying you just don't get fit by joining a gym. And that's exactly the same as networking. You know, you can pay all the money in the world to be a networker, but if you don't follow up and you don't do one-to-ones and you don't build on the relationships, then, the, you know, you're missing out on the, the value of it. Yeah, that's really important. That post-event uh, plan, having a post-event plan. So you're engaging afterwards for, for mm -hmm. that, for the, to utilise those connections. What about yourself, Gemma? What would you suggest? 
Yeah, absolutely. Some events give out a list. So even if you haven't managed to speak to everybody, you could still find them on LinkedIn yeah. and say, oh, hi, I think we were at the same event. We didn't get a chance to speak. It'd be great to connect. If you'd like to have a one-to-one -one at some point, get to know each other. But I see that and Zoom has made that so much easier. You so know, you much can easier. Have one -to -ones with people. Yeah, and it is, you know, you're not going to get to know everybody at an yeah. event. So, you know, having a way to follow up afterwards, because I think that's what people kind of see networking as where you get business. But actually networking is no. just the very first step in that. You know, it's basically the stops you having to make a cold call to this person. You now know exactly. them, you've had conversations with them, you can invite them to have more conversations. But if you don't do that, then then you've just met people once and they will forget you because, you know, you, you meet a lot of people networking. Yeah. And it's also that trust element. When you meet somebody face to face, people just have a gut, gut in instinct about you and uh, if they like you and if they want to continue that relationship. And so that, like you said, cold calling is the worst thing. I mean, I've never done that personally myself. It's such an uncomfortable thing to do. But back in the day, it was very, very common. So networking, I think, is replacing that because it really helps you to build authentic connections. And the other thing is, it's about, you know, we have to move along with the times that we're in, right? Everything's digital these days. So like what you said about sharing contact details, um, like I don't like doing business cards because basically business cards are like, I feel like they're outdated, but people still share business cards, right? Um, but if, if you're sharing your, like, for example, your LinkedIn, like you mentioned, um, or you're sharing, I, I'm, you, I'm sure you can get like online business card these days, these days where you can just share a QR code and then they get access to all your socials, to your website. I think that's an amazing way to give somebody all access to all of your platforms so that they can go and do their own research. So if they are really thinking about having a, um, a business connection or you or being a customer to you or referring somebody. So it's a great way to get most value is to share your details. That's uh, that's the way you're gonna stay in contact, like you said. So um, I think that's really valuable as well. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so the last question is about specifically about your business model because um we know that you've um, you've expanded in recent times into into franchising offering the people the, the opportunity to run their own networking group um off of your platform so could you tell it tell the, the viewers and the listeners what are the benefits of running a network instead of attending one or as well as attending one Right, shall I'll start, shall I, Gem? Um, so, um, basically, if it's all local business owners are, uh, lots of us know about multiple income streams, don't we? We all know that it's really good if we've got more than one income stream. And basically, a find a biz franchise is all about giving you an additional income stream. That's what it's all about. But for a local business owner, it is really good because if you already network to build your existing business. Yeah, I think that's it. I think small businesses find networking quite time consuming um, and it can be expensive. And I think the idea is that, you know, your time is very valuable. And so if you are meeting new connections at networking, then it really is worth thinking about running that networking yourself, flipping that around and actually earning an additional income for your time. But you're actually the heart of the network. You know, everybody's going to know you. Everyone's going to know what you do. And you're going to make a lot more connections by being the person that runs the networking. And I think that's that's the big thing. So there's definitely value in running a group. And obviously the additional value that you can bring to all the people that you know in that area. You know, mm -hmm. you can actually help other people, you know, in the way we have to get networking and to grow their business. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It just takes it to another level, doesn't it? Um, and build credibility within your local area of of your business, uh, but so people see you as um, kind of they look up to you as the as the role model, and uh, you're also helping other businesses expand and grow in parallel with your own growth, which is amazing, isn't it? 
So there's mutual benefit, really, I think. And uh, a lot, obviously, the financial benefit is, is you know, what people, people, people will often think, well, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of it? What, why should I spend extra time doing this? I'm already running a business. But when you look at it like that, you, you realise that actually you're doing it anyway. And you're, you're already spending, you already have a marketing budget. budget. You're already, um, you might actually be able to reduce your marketing budget because you're connecting with people. And it's, it's lovely to have those local businesses serving local communities communities so um so yeah i think that was a, a campaign on uh, on google recently as well about getting people having to have google pages so that they can attract local local customers so so yeah that, that that's the sort of principle that we're talking about here isn't it so yeah definitely you will be better known in your area if you're the person yeah. that runs working and that's what it's all about yeah yeah amazing amazing is there anything you want to add uh, amanda um, yeah, just basically about, um, you know, the, the multiple um, income streams is the way that lots of um, small business owners go. And this is a perfect add on income. And as Gemma said, whilst you're growing your existing business through networking, being the center of the network and um, getting an additional income as well. So that's yeah. the whole idea. Absolutely. So, um, so with that, then we've come to the end of our question. So I want to firstly, thank you so much for being on today's um, episode of Ladies Who Lead. It's been really inspiring. I've learned so much. And I'm sure uh, the listeners and viewers have, have picked up so many amazing golden nuggets from you, you guys who I would call the experts in, in networking. <laughs> and you do it in such a natural, authentic way, which is why you have such a large group of people. You work all over the UK and you're expanding by the day which is just beautiful to see uh, you, and you very rarely see um, you know mother daughter um, businesses so that's also very inspiring um, so if you want to tell people where they can find you yes um, on our website www.findyourbiznetworking.com so you can find our groups on there and everyone can visit for free um, we also do weekly online meetings and all the details about being a franchisee are on there too and if anyone's interested in being a franchisee we would love to talk to them beautiful any Plus closing comments knowledge... yeah just to say that we also have our knowledge hub on there as well so a lot of things we said today written down so if you want to have a little little look at that as well for any tips and advice yes. perfect so with that any closing comments anything you want to say before we we close just thank you so much for having us Nari. and i really hope that everybody does get out there networking because once you do it it isn't as scary as it seems absolutely yeah and I'd just like to say thank you so much, Nari. And to everyone, please remember that no one can shout about your business the way you can. So don't be put off. Go and find the right network for you. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I second that. Thank you very much, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure and I look forward to touching base uh, very soon. So take care and uh, see you next time, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.